All right, so we're recording. Is that? Yep, I see it. Okay. All right. Thank you all for joining. Uh, first item we got is the approval of the meeting minutes from September 8th. Do you need a motion to accept notes? I would, uh, if everyone's good with them, I'll accept the motion. I'll second it then. All right, all in favor of the minutes as uh, written from September 8th, uh, 2020. Wayne. Yes. Dave. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I am a yes. Uh, All right, we got some water and sewer abatements. Uh, 563 Hog Memorial, um, overestimated. So this is an abatement for 106.43 in water, 66.06 in sewer. We got 22 Whiting Ave, red reading entered incorrectly. 275.50 water, 171 sewer, 29 Park Ave, reading era, 301.46 for water, 187.11 sewer, and 63 Beale Ave, overestimated, 138.69 water, 86.09 in sewer. So those are all abatements. Make a motion that we accept the abatements as read. Seconded. All right, motions made and seconded. All in favor, Wayne. Aye. Dave. Aye. Ken. Yes. And I'm yes. All right. So next couple items on the agenda, some um, movements for employees. Um, Patrick Smith moving from water sewer to park and tree. And Brad Dudas, apologize for not pronouncing that right, moved from highway to water sewer. Um, I guess I don't think we need any, any type of vote. They're, they're all employees and um, if this is just for information purposes, I'm assuming they're all staying at the same pay rate and none of that is changing. Yeah, if I could speak to that, uh, Kevin. Um, so, Patrick Smith, when we had the opening in the pocket three division, requested to move over. That's a lateral move. Um, so, we've, we've actually already had him doing that for the last couple of weeks. Uh, Brad Dudas had put in a letter of interest to move over into the water and sewer division, that was, which that was – Opening was created by Patrick Smith's move over. Um, we don't, you know, talking to Dennis, we don't have an issue with Brad if that's his wish moving over, but uh, I think at this time we need to just put a hold on the actual, on actual going through with him moving over until we get in place, uh, you know, the two new hirees. Um, Brad's knowledge, with Brad's knowledge of the highway division and the workings of the sanding routes, et cetera, I can't really afford to lose a guy when I've already lost two guys in the last, you know, month um, that have knowledge of the sanding routes, et cetera. So until we can get a body in there, meaning the, new, the you know, new hirees, um, I would ask that we just hold off on actually moving him over until we can fill those positions, um, you know, fill that position with a body. Um, I, you know, in talking with Dennis, I don't think he has an issue with it. If something were to arise where he needs manpower, of course, we're all EPW, we can move people around. Uh, but for now, just with his knowledge of our division, um, I'd just like to put that actual move over on hold until we can put a body in there. Hey, Bruce, what departments are down right now? Excuse me? 
What departments are down right now? Down, down people. Well, we currently, we, I currently have uh, one out in Park and Tree, and I am missing um, one mechanic. So that's within the highway division. Uh, and if we were to move Brad over now, I would be down another person in the highway division. Um, but the way it stands now with the old Levi is it's down in water and sewer. Right? Actually, Bruce, we'll be down two in highway because Ryan's now moved to the garage. Oh yeah, that's correct. So Ryan, we moved Ryan into the maintenance division. So if we were to move, and you know Ryan was in the highway division. So if we move, we were to move Brad now, I'd actually be down too. I'd be down to a foreman, and you know one equipment operator, uh, regular driver that uh, is in the highway division. So it would be tough going into the winter. Even though Patrick moved over to Pocket Tree, he's still down one in Pocket Tree, or is that? Yeah, Jeff Riley's still out. He is, okay. Yep. Yeah, a few more. Thank you, Bruce. I, mean, I, I think Bruce and, and Dennis, I mean, it's your yeah. prerogative. It's, it's your, you know what I mean? If, if you know, it's not, if it's just a lateral move, no change in pay, and then, um, you know, we, we can't have departments, you know, we got to maintain at least some semblance of manpower. So I, I'm not, I'm not opposed. I'm not opposed to waiting until we get a, a, a at least one hiring in for park um, highway. Yeah. And, and then the guy's not losing any money. He's still getting paid the same rate. So, you know, the, I wouldn't want to hurt the guy if we are promoting someone, certainly, you know, I'd, I'd want to get him in that new position, but um, where it's just a lateral move pay-wise, I think it makes more sense just keep them where they are till we straighten out some of these or hire some, you know, to fill some of the holes. All right. All right. I was going to ask, I was just curious if Patrick uh, had some of those sewer certifications. I think that we're trying to get more people um, to get. Yeah, we Patrick, lose the... Patrick, yeah, Patrick does not. Patrick, okay. All right. Of course, you know, now that he's gone to park and tree, they would be uh, of limited use to him anyways. Okay. All right. I think like Kevin said, you guys are managing the day-to-day, -day, you know, who's doing what. And uh, in crisis, you You're borrow, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So... Okay. Yeah. So we're good yeah. with that plan. We leave, well, uh, Patrick's going to go over to High uh, Park and Tree for right now, and um, and uh, Brad will as soon as we get a new hiree in, we'll uh, so we'll uh, uh, leave him where he's at until a new hiree's here, and uh, then we'll pull him over. Sound, sound good? Yep. Sounds good. Yep. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next in the. Agenda, we got Robert Veloso, class competition. Um, completion. All right, so Robert Veloso, <laughs> he's going to take <laughs> both sports. Uh -huh. He's taking both courses in, um, in to wastewater. And there you go. now he has the Yeah, he has the qualifications to um, be promoted to uh, wastewater too. Um, look, looking through the previous job postings and you know in the years, um, that's basically um, he would go to uh, wastewater one if he had five years of experience. You know he ha doesn't have that, so he could uh, you know, but he does have the qualifications that he could. We could. It's up to the board, but then if we could raise him to um, wastewater two, you know, uh, and he's the only guy that has, that has completed the course lately. Um, and he's taken done, done the effort to you know to do it, and I'd like to I'd like to move him up if you guys agree. Sure, why not? Yeah, I make a motion that we uh, move Robert Beloso up to uh, wastewater too. Okay, the only thing that I 
The only thing I'm not aware of is whether it needs to be posted. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think if we, we, I think something like that may have to be posted because you, where you're moving them up. Well, is, is anybody else in the union have those qualifications? The only other individuals that hope have those qualifications are already wastewater one. Right. But I mean, there's nobody else that doesn't have them, correct? Correct. He's the only one. So why would it matter? Uh, other than it's just a, uh, a procedural thing, you know, I, that's the only thing I, I could think of. But there's nobody else qualified to be moved up to that spot. So right, but, but haven't we? Sorry, haven't we promoted people like guys got operator licenses and things like that, and we haven't, you know, that we we promoted them to a a different class, and I don't think we um, posted well, for it. Posted you know, if it was a new position, we'd post it, but we've had guys get their licenses and then we just, we move them up. I, I, I think. Correct. I think we just move them up. It, it, he did the effort, did the work. I'd say if someone wants to complain, have them come see us. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, if, if okay. how can you complain if you don't have the qualifications to right. do the job? <laughs> All right, so we have a motion. Um, if someone wants a second to promote yeah, Robert. Second. All right, seconded by Ken. So all in favor, Wayne. Aye. Dave, you're on mute. <laughs> you're on mute, Dave. Are you aye? Back up. Uh, <laughs> Ken? Yes. And I'm yes. All right. Well, good for him. Good for him taking advantage of uh, – what we have to offer and then the re reimbursements for taking the courses and, you know, and ultimately getting him a little bit more money. So. Absolutely. Yeah. It amounts to 93 cents an hour or $37 a week. And he did, he did, the, he did, the, and, he, and, he, and he got good grades on too. Great. The board appreciates it. Yes. Thumbs up. All right, we'll go down the list in order here. Christmas tree fundraiser. So this is what you sent out, Bruce? So, yes, uh, I was approached by Michelle LaMatina. Uh, she wants to, uh, Dollars for Scholars is starting this year as far as their fundraising program. Uh, due to COVID, they've been limited on how they can raise funds. So she was looking for a way to help out with that. And he came up with this idea, and um, so I guess he's just looking. She just wanted to make us aware, slash, get a, get the board's blessing to hold us in the in the town park. We were thinking um, uh, inside the the upper baseball field, due to the fact that it's fenced in and there's uh, out power outlets available. Uh, I didn't have any problem with it. She just wanted to she wanted to run it by every board in town to make sure everybody's uh, okay with it. So that's why I sent out the information. And, um, you know, I, I think she's just looking for maybe a quick vote for the board to okay the use of the park for that reason. I think it's a great idea. I make a motion that we let uh, Michelle LaMantina have her Christmas tree fundraiser in the park. Three, I'll second that. Bruce, just I'm, I'm all in favor. I just had a couple of questions. So this is just people buy a tree, they put it up, decorate it, um, and then we'll assist them in the cleanup, or we'll do the cleanup. Is that kind of the understanding? Yeah, I see our uh, our uh, participation will be to help remove the trees after they've been stripped of all the decorations. Uh, just assist in. Um, not so much setting up the trees because the people who do the trees will be doing that. Uh, just, you know, giving the guidance of where she can get power. Uh, she's already talked to Peter Palazzo as far as any safety issues, how we'll do that. He's the uh, electrical inspector in town. So, um, yeah, I hope we'll be limited, but, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty much all we'll need to do. Okay. All right. Um, 
So this is a motion and seconded to uh, allow Dollars for Scholars to run, hopefully run their Christmas tree fundraiser. Uh, Wayne? Yes. Dave? Yes. Ken? Yes. I am a yes. Hopefully they can uh, get the approval and then we can have other town of all the other agencies and they can do it. That'd be good. <clears throat> all right, we got got uh, frozen meter fee. Joe Dennis. Uh, yeah, uh, currently uh, um, our, our uh, pay scale, scale for frozen meter fee, uh, fee is $150. Um, the previous meters that we, you know, that we used to have, um, and we still do the ones that are installed now, if they freeze and they, they have a blowout plate on the bottom that we can, you know, take the meter and uh, uh, pull it apart, change, you know, rebuild it and put it back. And we charged them, with, you know, it was, a, it was kind of a, for your negligence, you get to pay $150 for us to do that. Um, the new meters, um, they, we, we have no parts to rebuild the, the, the meter. Uh, if we, if a, if a person lets their uh, newer me, a new style meter, new uh, um, master meter freeze and break, the only uh, choice we have is to replace the meter. We have to pull the frozen meter out and replace it with a brand new one. Now we charge currently anybody that builds a new house or is coming off a well uh, and getting a new meter, three hundred dollars for that meter. So it just, just doesn't. If we're going to be replacing a meter that we don't no longer have the ability to rebuild. We, I, I feel that it should be the same. It should be the same three hundred dollars for if you, if you let it freeze, um, um, as a, as it would be for a new homeowner or somebody coming off of a, a well. I would agree. Do we want to even make it simpler and just do it as cost of the meter? You know, the meter is a three hundred now, but they could be three fifty right next year. Right. You, you know, if we want to make a make a change to the the current uh, rules you know if a meter freezes you got to replace it so the cost to replace that meter the meter and the time associated you know should be at the expense of the the homeowner Thank you. that would be my only recommendation let's keep it simple Keep them all uh, new meter and frozen meter at the same price. Well, yeah, I think just the replacement of any meter found to be damaged by the homeowner, whether it's frozen or I don't know, I don't know what else could happen, drop something on it or they just break it. That has happened too. You know? <laughs> Whatever the current cost of the new meter is uh, down the road, would it be five years from now and it goes up to 500? That's what they charge. Right. Yeah. I understand. All right. Yeah. So, someone wants to make a motion that we could uh, update that fee schedule. Make a motion for the frozen meter fee or to replace a meter that the homeowner damages for the current cost of uh, a new meter. Second it. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Wayne? Aye. Dave? Aye. Ken? Aye. And I'm a yes. Okay. That was easy. Inspection fees. Okay, um, as far as that, when, when we, um, when we um, have, a, we, this is a, something that hasn't ran across too much. So when the, um, a new uh, contractor or homeowner or whatever has a house and they're going to dem demolish it uh, and then build a new house, um, we charge a, um, and, you know, we have an inspection fee for the, um, disconnecting the existing service and then um, and demolishing the house. And in some cases, that's all that happens. They demolish the house because it's, you know, a, such, such as Commercial Street that was on the fire, you know, had a fire. They just demolish the house and, and um we we inspected the the uh, um, water lines properly disconnected, and then that's the end of it. In other cases, they demolish the house and then they build a new one, and um, um, and they would you know install they would uh, the the work that would be done on the water service would be longer. It would be 
Um, so the, the initial dem demolition, and then we might go back and then inspect the, where the new water main was made, or water service was in, installed. Um, in my mind, it, it, you know, it's, uh, I think it would be, once they've paid an inspection fee, such as like the plumbing inspector when they when they pay for the building, uh, you know, they, they, it doesn't matter how many times you go back, you, it's the same inspection fees. And currently, we have a fee for demolition, and then we have a fee for for new new service. Um, and I just, you know, it gets. I I believe it should once you get to pay for the, you know, because you're already getting the fifty four eighty five for the uh, connection of a new house. Once they pay, you know, an individual pays the inspection fee, that inspection should that fee should carry you to the completion of the project. Isn't there a fee to Dennis to turn off and turn on as well? That's that's true, and 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 they you, that's included in you know they, uh, that's another fee that's included in the fifty four eighty five, you know for new construction, you know. But when you when we would go uh, a, a lot that was being a house was being demolished and we would turn off the water, you know they, that would we would turn whether we would get that fee, okay they and. I just don't see why we should double charge them when we when we go back and when the new house is there. That be though for uh, putting in a new meter or taking out the old meter, whatever is that? In, that's included in with the turn off, turn on. Uh, not just the 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 turn on, turn off. Okay, is is um um. Not included is not part of the inspection fee. The inspection fee is a separate fee altogether. Okay. And that so in other words, if we, if we get an inspection fee for for a new house, somebody divide you know subdivides a, a large piece of property, and then we go back and we start doing inspections for for water connections. Right. We that inspection fee, that that inspection fee covers every time we go back and inspect. So if we go back and we and we inspect where they've installed the curb stop. You know, and then we go back and install when they are connected to service, and then we go back and, and inspect after they, you know, finish the inside and they're ready for a meter. Um, and that one fee covers multiple visits. Can I ask how you came up with the figure of fifty-four eighty-five? That's when you, um, when they, the entire everything. So that would be connection to sewer, connection to water, the inspection, the turn on, turn off. And the installation of the meter and the cost of the meter. It sounds like that would be a little more than fifty-four dollars. You're covering the no fifty-four eighty-five, and that's for the individual house lot. Okay. Okay. And that doesn't count. That doesn't count if they you know if they install a new a new water main. That that's fifty thousand by itself. And the same thing connection to you know installing a. Um, a new sewer, extending a sewer pipe, you know, sewer main, is two thousand. So I'm sorry, uh, twenty-five thousand. The fifty-four eighty-five your house. <laughs> or is it just fifty-four dollars and eighty-five cents? That's what's confusing me. No, five thousand four hundred and eighty-five. Oh, okay, dollars. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I I was thinking you were saying fifty-four dollars and eighty-five cents right along. My apologies. Mm -hmm. All right. So the the point, my, my contention is that once they pay the inspection, pay an inspection fee for a project, okay, that we should, you know, that that inspection should come carry us through through the the uh, the completion of the project, and just the inspection fee, not the rest of the fees, still stay the same. Right. Okay. I guess as long as it's clear it's the same project, you know what I mean. Yeah. If it, hey, would you know we're we're gonna demo the house, but we're not sure what we're doing, this that, and you know, if, if it's a reasonable well, time frame that they're gonna come back with the time the You're right. It, then exactly. I think it makes sense. If not, then you were into, well, did he pay or not pay, or is it covered? Isn't it covered? Uh, right. I would agree with you. I would agree with you. They, it has to be a continuous rolling thing. You know, it has to, you know, you, they can't just, you know, uh, demo the house and wait two, two years and then expect those fees to apply. Well, and I think when they, they demo it, they have to tell us 
hey, we're demoing it and we're gonna we're gonna build a new one within the next or we're starting we, we're gonna go right into the construction if it's any question when they start again it's it's another fee because we we can't keep track of that nor should we right mm -hmm. so i think that should be spelled out in their in their project what is their project is it demo or is it demo and rebuild and if it just says demo then it's a fee if they come back later then there's another fee i agree so i, I think I, if it's a demo I, it's a, if it's a demo and rebuild the, the one the, and, and this is just for the hundred dollar inspection fee but once you start you know i believe it should continue you know, that that should cover you to the completion of your project I would agree. Dennis, I think this is not this one, but do we have a comprehensive list of all the fees? We do. Like a fee schedule, you mean? Yeah. Uh, we should probably post it was going to be my only comment. I don't know if we do. I haven't seen it before. I don't recall anyway, but like on the website, it shouldn't be a surprise to people. And uh, certainly when you need to raise it for whatever reason or, um, you know, I, yeah, I think when we can help out and consolidate, obviously, but yeah, I was just thinking what Kevin was thinking, let's say this gets stretched out or they, you know, then they change their plans and go to, I don't know, some other type of building and uh, yeah, it could get lost. Uh, so maybe whatever, within a year, whatever time limit you think makes sense. Um, then six I think it's, I think when they, when they come in to say, hey, we're demoing this house, if, if, they're just saying we're demoing it, then they pay a fee. If they come back four months later and say, hey, we decided to build the house, then it's another fee. They, they have to tell I, us I, up, up front. They, right. they get I to would, tell us. I would, agree. I would agree. But if they come in and they say we're going to demo and then rebuild. Yeah, it's the same project. Same. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's one fee. Because right. it's the same that's, project. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, currently it's, 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 it's a double hit on under the fee, you know, you know, or, you know, and, and this says it's not, it's not like this is happening a lot. It's only, it's only starting to happen a, a couple of places now. Actually, the only point, you know, it's one court street and the commercial street, you know, they're, you know, that we, we, you know, we want to see the, uh, the, when they disconnect the service. Okay. And charge an inspection. And that's when we want them to pay an inspection fee. But then when they connect that service back up, we want to see it again. But I don't see where we should have to hit them again with another inspection fee for that. Right. Because it's I the agree. same, in my you know, it's the same project. I agree. As long it's as kind of like, we, it would, it's like the plumb, you wouldn't ask the plumbing inspector, you know, for another fee. I mean, the, I mean, the plumbing inspector doesn't ask for another inspection fee every time he comes to inspect. Same thing with the electrical inspector. Once you pay for the, the, the initial, you know, building permit, the fees for that, they come back as many times as you call. Cool. Makes sense. Until the completion of the project. Yep. Those fees, Dennis, can you possibly send an email out to all of us with the, that attachment of the various fees so that we have it? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I can, uh, I, just, just in your favor, Dennis, I was just going to point out that, so when the building department issues permits, uh, what you're talking about, they base it on square footage usually. So, you know, whether it's a residential or commercial project, so a big building, you know, 40,000 square feet, they're getting more money for that permit to cover all the, uh -oh. um, the various inspectors. All right, so. and, and, and. Yeah, and, and we kind of do too, because you know, the bigger the building, the more units it is, and we charge per unit. You know, um, you know, so there we already kind of you know get them on that anyways. Um, right, I mean, right. the, there's no doubt about it that the, that the big hit is when they put a water main in. I mean, we charge fifty thousand dollars just to, just for the uh, uh, form to do that, and whether that you know whether that water main feeds another two, three houses, or whether it feeds four. It's the same price, other than the individual units, and then each individual unit is another fifty-four eighty-five on top of that. Okay. Then I got another question. I hate to ask, but I have to. Who is uh, 
So in the case where a building burns or whatever demo, uh, that meter, um, do we take it out of commission? Does it get reinspected? Uh, does it go back to the manufacturer? You know what? I don't know that you want to plug it, it back it, in, right? Right. Um, well, I mean. Before we were in the new meter program, if we were to recover a, a, a good, like say, census meter that had no problems, we would um, record the, the readings and, and sometimes and reinstall it someplace else. You know, if, of course, nowadays, you know, we, with the new meters, you know, everything that's not a, not a, a master meter is something we don't want anyways. But if it's a master meter in a burned building, we will try and, and um, um, recover it. And when they rebuild, we may, we, if we can, we're going to reinstall it. I'm just thinking we should check, you know, should they be retested? Because uh, now they're almost like it's a, a small computer in there. Uh, All right. You know, so especially in the case of a fire where heat may have caused a problem. Uh, yeah. That's all. Um, it's above my pay grade. Yeah. Just, just pointing it out. That, right. <laughs> I no, never I thought really, about yeah, it. If you, saw, if you saw obvious damage, you know. The thing is, we can always bench test it to see if it still reads correctly, and we can, and we can also uh, hit it with a radio reader to see if it's that part of it still works. And if though, and though, if you know, if, they, if that if it works, then we can reinstall the meter and and uh, and keep using it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know. All right. That works. So my question is, you know, are we going to charge them twice for an inspection? You know, or just the once, once they start a project. And I believe it should, once they start to, you know, we, they come in and pay the inspection fee, it should be for the duration of their one, project. Yeah, um, one fee per, yeah. per project. That, so is that the 5485? Is that the? <laughs> no, it's the $100. It's a $100 fee. The inspection is a hundred dollar fee. We're talking a hundred bucks here. <laughs> oh my gosh! So that, yeah, yeah. It's just you uh, know I, I, we're already getting them for everything else. I hate to nickel and dime them on I just on on returns for inspections. Uh, one fee, one time. Yeah. That's what I would suggest. Is that. That it's the, the one fee for the duration of the project. Now the one hundred dollar inspection fee gets you back to wherever you wherever you say you're finished. Well, yeah, it's probably not worth, I, worth us. Dennis, can I can I and, and Ken asked for the list? I'm going through my notes. It seems like every the last four or five meetings, or a lot of times in the last year, we're changing fee or looking for clarification. I think get us a, a list of fees. We make it a semi-annual annual agenda item and we vote the fees for the year. Done. Okay. And any clarification or confirmation, you know, like we do with snow plowing. You know what I mean? We have the list, whatever, whenever Bruce brings to us in the, the fall or whatever, this is, these are our rates. These are the rates for the year. This is what everybody's going to pay. And that's it. It's recorded. It's in the minutes. So if you can work on getting the list of fees, and I guess I'd ask anybody if they have questions, probably, you know, just reach out to Dennis and clarify or confirm or, and then we come back to the next meeting, maybe the meeting after, if we had to, if we need additional discussion, we vote on a set water and sewer fee schedule. Every fee that we can think of, and then we, if we got to do it semi-annual, we'll do it semi-annual. If it's something that could be done annually, we'll do it annually. Because it just, just going through my notes, we had, you know, we've had cross-connection fees recently that we have changed. We had the, the um, commercial account, you know, for coming out for inspections. We just changed that a couple meetings ago. Um, and, I, and I appreciate all the work, I mean, that you're doing, that we're getting these fees updated. That's, that's the most important thing. But um, I, I think let's just try to wrap wrap it all up into one, and I can do I can send you the current the um, list we have. 
the previous fees were to trying to catch up to make the were uh, actually increases. Uh, whereas this right. is basically, I'm just trying to how do how uh, how does it apply? How does this you know this this apply? Not I'm not asking for an increase on this or no no price I change. But I think just if we do this on an annual pay. basis, we'll we'll be yep. staying current with rates as well. You know, so things like mm -hmm. the water meter, you know, we'll stay up to date with that water meter replacement and things. So. Um, well, if the, the fact that you changed the water meter to what the meter costs, that was a great idea. I mean, because if you're covering your costs, then, you know. No, you so if be, you can work it, yeah. evaluated daily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you can get us a I complete a water, water and sewer. Yeah. And um, why don't we throw it on the agenda for next meeting, Amy? If, if if we're all ready and everything looks good, we're ready to vote on it. We'll vote on it. If we need further info, we can always table it. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, just to clarify, that's, it's not that I'm opposed, or I think anybody is. It's like I I won't remember. You can tell me the fee what it is tonight, and then next meeting or six months from now, I'm not trying. You know, so if I don't have a list to kind of check and compare to, it's. You know, I thought you were talking about more money, honestly, so when I first was hearing no, that. No, no, it's like, fee, I just, like I, you know, I want to know how long it should last. And I think it's, you know, right. basically, once you pay this particular fee, it should last for the duration of your project. You know, that's all. And there's no price increase or anything. It's just how it applies. Right, right. I think your concept is good. That hands with that, if that helps. I mean, that's... So, but uh, be helpful and, to see on paper, you know. And whatever we come up with, we can post on the website too, or whatever. Right. I mean, makes it simple, especially we now. We should look at all of them. Yep. We should look at all of them and make sure that they align. So, yeah. Work on getting them out, Dennis. We can look at them and we'll put it on the agenda for next I, meeting. I, I have them on paper right here. It's just a matter of, you know, I'll um, scan them and send them. Yeah, but right. far is, is this the application of this particular one you know you know like i said i, I, and I think you guys are pretty much feel like i do is that once once an individual pays the, the initial inspection fee it should apply for the duration of this project well i think they, those are things we can put in this schedule dennis we, we can put that right in there so there's no you don't have to interpret it you don't have to we don't have to the person applying for it doesn't have to I mean, that's part of it too. Mm -hmm. Part of a fee schedule is, okay, what do you get? You know, what do you, what do you get for your fee that you're paying? So, so we can okay. include in that. So, all right. Uh, next agenda item, future town meeting articles. So um, we have um, um, already the finance committee and um, the uh, um, town of Count, they're looking, they're trying to do some advanced planning. And um, I know we got the force main project that we're looking at. Um, but, um, you know, if we, you know, I could, I could give them a laundry list of stuff. Um, it's just, you know, where, where you guys want to go next. Um, this, this is, they're asking I mean, for a spring town meeting? Yes, for next spring. Okay. Um, I, I guess first and foremost, in, in, I, I haven't reached out and I know today was Frank's last day. So I have to start talking with Lisa um, about scheduling a fall town meeting for the sewer. Right. Based, based off of our conversation with Zia that if we want to get funding lined up and SRF funds and things like that, we need to have town meeting approval. And if we have to wait till spring, this project isn't starting until 2022. <laughs> So, on the subject of articles, uh, chime in. Um, so, it was my intention to present the articles this year at town meeting. Um, uh, one for a new uh, mower and a continuing effort to update the mower fleet, which some of them still date back to the early 2003, 4, something like that. So, uh, 
you know, getting another new large mower, um, and I can purchase that. I'll try to get that out of the cemetery account, which currently has close to thirty thousand dollars in it. The mowers are a little over ten. So um so that was one of my articles. Another article that I'd like to present this year would be for a Chevy, uh a one ton pickup truck. We have a two thousand three in our fleet that is seen better days, you know. I don't know how many years we're supposed to get out of these trucks, but I think it's time to replace that before, you know, it's undrivable. Um, that would be a raise and appropriate request. Uh, also, a raise and appropriate request would be the effort to continue uh, trying to uh, weed out the 1999s. So I would request another dump truck. Uh, this time, it would not be a cabin chassis. It would be... Uh, a, the regular uh, truck with a dump body because the remaining sanders we have are sliding. So this would make that truck, you know, dual purpose. We could use it for a dump truck during the summer and during the winter we put the slide in in there and it's our dedicated sander just for the winter. Um, another article that, that I think is important very, very important to present at town meeting is a lift for the mechanics garage. Um, they have portable lifts now, so they wouldn't have to be mounted into the floor of the old garage. We'd be able to move it over into a new garage when it gets built. Um, it would be the same type of lift I'd want to get in the new garage anyway, so um, I've been researching those. They're about $45,000. And the another article I was looking to present this year would be for an infield grooming machine, one of those three wheel machines. Um, we are the, the machine that we've been using for the last 15, 20 years was a hand me down from the high school back when they had a shop. And uh, it's we can't get parts for it anymore. It has no steering blocks now. Um, we would use this machine to groom the base, the three baseball fields that we care for and the pathways, the, the uh, gravel pathways that run throughout the park. Uh, so, I mean, we could get a couple of good uses out of it. They're around, they're around with attachments around 20 grand or more. And then lastly, the article that we want to present every year uh, for the road work, a hundred thousand dollars for uh, various road work. So that's the most um, important one. Four, five, six. So there's six articles. That's kind of a lot, but you know, the cemetery uh, accounts can pay for the mower. And I was thinking of, uh, you know, we could use some of the cemetery money to offset the cost of the one-time dump, because that's where we we use the one times in the cemeteries anytime we dig a grave. Or we're working in there. So, um, with the board's blessing, those are the, those are the articles that I'd like to move forward for and present to uh, the FinCom and the town accountant. Uh, at least moving forward to see what they say. You know, I, you know, I, I have no issue with I'm sorry, g giving them even more. Not, we know we're not going to get everything, but almost like, um, you know, they we're are always hearing, hey, you know, what's your five-year, ten-year plan? And, and and I know a lot of this is the replacement of the 1999 trucks. You know, Dennis, you said you have a list a mile long. Well, there's, there's no right. harm in sharing that with them saying, hey, you know, we have these ten different things or whatever they are. And, yeah, we can't do all ten, but here's my list. Here's my top three and then just start picking away that way no they know too for next year we're going we're gonna to be back with maybe the same amount maybe more um well my my problem just one thing just uh, you know, bruce and, and and wayne i know you'll you'll want to or i think no one no one on the board would not support this so we get a hundred thousand dollars for roadway do we want to start a separate fifteen thousand dollars just for sidewalk I know the hundred grand we use for whatever, and we can use it for sidewalk, and we can use it for roads, and we can use it for, but you know, there's been a lot of issues with not a lot, but there's a lot of sidewalks in town, probably much more than any other town our size. Um, you know, we we have 
sidewalks like you'd have in a city. You know what I mean? Both sides of streets, both sides of main streets. You typically don't see that. I mean, you know, especially, t you know, you look at towns I, around neighboring towns. You know? I would agree with you, but I think it should be 25000 should be $100,000 for roads and $25,000 article for sidewalk repair. The sidewalks in town, I mean, and I see people on social media, and what they say is, is, is true. I mean, people have fallen. It's, it's, it's terrible, and we just don't have the money. So if we don't ask, we're not going to get it, and we need it. So I, w I would like to see $25,000 a year. To, to redo sidewalks and $100,000 for the roads. I think, I think Bruce, yeah, let's, right. yeah, let's make a second one just for, just for sidewalks. You know, and, 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 it, and it, you know, we, we have a lot, you know what I mean? And, and 25 grand doesn't go too far. Um, no, it's gonna I, go I a lot further by us doing it. You know what I mean? That, that, that allows, you know, the park, uh, the highway department to hopefully we can do a lot with them. Yeah. I mean, $25,000 us doing the work is, it goes a lot, a lot farther. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's 50 grand if you had to pay a contractor. Right. Easily. Right. Yeah, that would be good. So, Cause so I agree. Um, yeah. I thought, I thought Kevin's original suggestion was 50,000. So I, oh. I, heard you <laughs> I think I said, and I thought Wayne was but... stopping him down. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> 15, one five. 15, yeah. No, but I, I get, I mean, 15, 25. 20, I mean, I, I think we got to start right. somewhere so we can start at 25. And, and if it, oh, that... yeah, because that sounds cause good. I... And it will be specifically for sidewalks. And, you know, it, obviously it would be something that we would have to. Uh, you know, set aside maybe for a few years anyway to get enough money built up into that sidewalk specific account to actually do a good length of sidewalk rather than do band aids, you know. But I think it's a good idea, and then also it, it lets people know that that can't get spent on anything else but the sidewalk, right. and so people want sidewalk fixed. There it is. We you vote this in, we'll start tipping away at them. Right. Yeah, I think that's important because the perception is that more money, taxpayer money, is coming our way, and it doesn't come to the DPW. So, yeah. having specific articles, yeah, that'll call attention. So I agree. That's great. And we yeah, and we've done a lot of sidewalks over the last ten or fifteen years. It's just you know you those get forgotten. When you know you walk down a bad sidewalk, you, you, people forget about all the other ones that have done over the last ten or fifteen years. There's been quite a bit. Yeah. But, but if we have some dedicated money, all right. So now, how about uh, generators? And what else <laughs> isn't on that list of? Uh... That's, on well, that's on Dennis. Well, on Dennis's plate. <laughs> yeah. Right. So everything I propose has to, you know, more or less come out of water and sewer. And of course, the the, the big the big thing that we got to get done is the, the sewer force main, and what we have after that. I mean, um, you know, I got a, I got a, uh, the, I got a truck that's got 165,000 miles on it, and it's uh, currently uh, 14 years old. Um, we still have the 30 streets in town that are, you know, the water mains were put on, but the services weren't done, and the trenches are still, still there. Um, you know, uh, we want to consider that Beaver Street. Uh, main, what we're going to do, how we can take advantage of whether, you know, Brockton with that valve tie-in. And um, uh, uh, the other thing is the one thing I didn't, you know, mention when we were talking about Auburn Street is that if we're going to repave Auburn Street, it has a, you know, a, a fairly old PVC main over the majority of it. And then there are many sections of it that still have um, asbestos cement and mi mixed in with PVC. So there's a section of PVC and then asbestos cement, and then it's back to PVC. And then up by the curve, it turns back into um, uh, eight inch plastic. And I don't, I have, I have faith in plastic. The problem is this, this, the saddles is the, you know, they rot out. They rot so out we're, right? you know, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna do yeah. anything as far as, you know, is uh, looking at that, or we just wanna pave over it and, and uh, cross our fingers. Um, you know, um, 
and we still have some ongoing projects too now already with the uh, you know with the previous uh, articles that we got you know at the at the two main pump stations we've uh ch- we've rebuilt had three of the the, ma- the the major pumps rebuilt well four of them have been rebuilt three of them have been re- reinstalled three sets of motors have been rebuilt and we've reinstalled we got one um one more commercial street to uh to finish it and, and um um to to it on it. and um you know those those projects are ongoing we still have uh work uh, uh proceeding on the uh Rowena and Old coach, uh, changing them over so we can also have the dual feed with the, with the generators repaired. Now we want to get the uh, the uh, the secondary uh, ability to use the power, uh, the a tow, be, uh, tow behind generator with them. Um, we're still doing that, um, and we have the money for a generator for Belcher, but we just haven't had the time to to, to do anything. The next part, the next thing for that is to pour the pad. And dig in the, uh, the the conduit from one cabinet to the where the generators go. It just you know it just has a bit you know between that and and finish the meters. So there's a get, lot on the plate. Get cracking. And and, and, water, and water and sewer only has uh, so much. Wasn't there a little patch that you had to do from the pump station out towards Route 18 uh, with either the water or sewer to Dennis that you were talking? If they do the force main, well, if we, if we, right? If so, if we're going to do water on on um, Auburn Street, I would imagine that we would start where the state left off. Yeah, no, yeah. at the intersection. Yeah. Well, I, I I think that uh, we should discuss as a board replacing that main at the same time that we do the force main while the roads dug up. And we incorporate it into the same bond as the force main because those and saddles and are going to rot off. <laughs> it's just a matter of and time. And another thing is, you know, I, it's not, it shouldn't add any cost to us, but we should let Brockton know that if they're going to replace any of the valves on their 24 inch main that is under Auburn Street, that they should do it, they should coordinate with us. Right. Yeah. There's that's... Two, sets, two sets of valves. Yeah. Uh, just a thought. Uh, do we need to talk to Engrid or should we talk to National Engrid about the age of that uh, service in the road too while we're there? The gas service? I think when we get, yeah. I'm sorry, gas. Yeah. 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 We get a better yeah. timeline. Yeah. If we know this project is happening next year, then it's, you know, notifications, you know. As early as possible. early spring, hey, that you know, the road construction's going on. You have a year to get your main in. You know, where you you're gonna be. You're gonna be waiting. Oh, I, don't, I don't know why we could. Yeah, I don't know why we couldn't just send them a letter now. Tell them we're in the planning stages of it, and you need to start thinking about. It. Yeah, we could. Good. We don't want to run into the same thing we have on 18, where we got to wait another eight months so that the road can settle. Typically, every year I correspond with National Grid Gas regarding any road work that we have upcoming for the next year, just so they know what we're doing and uh, they can go ahead and just exactly what we're talking about, go ahead and replace anything they need to replace before we go ahead and repave the road. So uh, they, they usually reach out early, but you know we can add that to the list when we send it to them. Or are they also are they the only utility that's in the road? I know most of it's all aerial, but is it just gas, water, and sewer? That's the only thing that's in the ground. Um, and Brockton's water. And Brockton's water. Well, so maybe it's just a letter to Brockton Water and and Grid Gas. Hey, we're in the design phases for a project that's estimated to be June twenty one to June twenty two. Which will include full full width pavement of the entire length of Auburn Street. If you have any work, now it's time. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yes, it does. Can you guys work on getting those letters out? I mean, they can just come. I mean, I can call Pat Smith. Um, as far as Brockton, I just call Pat and uh, Pat Hill. I think. Just I think. 
I think you need to put it in, I think we need to put it in writing and send them a letter. You know, address it to their, do they have a board of commissioners or do they have a, they must have some similar type of board or something, you know, superintendent, water superintendent or, you know, I don't know how their hierarchy works. Yeah, it should be in writing. You know, and the same thing with NGRID, you know, I know we have the local contacts and, you know, the guys you deal with locally, but it should go to them as well as, you know, if there's a regional or, or something like that. Um, that way there's, you know, oh, nobody told us. Yeah, that, that's no problem. I have that contact info. I'll send them, I'll send them an early, uh, early letter, uh, not including any chapter 90, just basic road work that we'll be doing just to give them an early heads up as possible. Yeah. I mean, I mean, best case we're looking, you know, it's a, like I said, a June 21 to June 22 construction duration you know that's best case so it's going to give them 18 months to plan we'll do yep. and i think if that water main is in that i don't want to say bad shape but in that condition then maybe we throw that into it well it's just a lot of it's a lot of plastic asbestos cement plastic asbestos yep. cement so yep i mean we're bound to have a problem with those saddles. Another thing you got to throw in there too, Dennis, is the bit uh, if we're going to, Brockton's going to be putting in that T for us. When we got the road open, we want to do the backup. Yes. We want to mean. Yep. So we have to throw That's the other thing is that, you know, besides the fact of, of uh, replacing the main, it should probably increase to at least 12 inch. Mm. The main on Auburn, I, I would agree. That's what we put on the mast dot side, right? All 12 inch? Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. I believe, yeah. Yep. Yeah, you don't, right. we don't do 10 no more. No. Okay. Well, I, I think, I mean, talking with the, the force main, I think we need to, I know Ziad said he was close on an estimate. We can throw him this little curveball now and <laughs> um, hey, can you can you throw in a couple thousand feet of water line and add it to it? I mean, that should be fairly simple, to be honest. I mean, a twelve inch main in the street, you know, you can, there's not. I mean, it's one. There's not a ton of houses. It's not like we have a house every, you know, hundred feet going that whole length. So you get some in the beginning, but then there's a large areas where there's not a lot of services. So. Um, Dennis, maybe me, you, and Ziad can can talk, and we can have them just crunch some quick numbers. You know, again, if yep. we're going to go to town meeting, we need to have a complete, not complete, but a, a good estimate of costs. And, and I would agree with another couple million to replace the water line. You know. Right. Okay. And, and like I said, I'd give them the more information, the better for a spring town meeting. You know, let them tell you no. But all, at least the, they all the board members, all the board members are aware of how many breaks we've had on Beaver Street, right? No. Well, what's Dennis reminded us? Uh, me, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> about about four in the last five years. Right. Yeah. Um, so that needs to be taken care thing. of. Yeah. And the other, you know, the other thing is the, is that 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 Beaver Street main. That six inch Beaver Street main feeds an eight inch Dr. Lion main at Vent Meadowview. And that's you're not supposed to do that? You're not supposed to feed an eight inch with a six inch? What's wrong with that? No. <laughs> it's been a while since I took a fluids class, but I don't think that's proper hydrology. Is there a friction loss there? <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, going back by the patch. <laughs> well, Mr. Chairman, it appears uh, Bob has a question. Uh, how oh. much water sewer capacity remaining do we have? Oh, it's on the, yeah. So, Bob, to answer your question, um, <laughs> capacity, we're fine. 
Um, the, the, when we do the force main, we don't have to make it any larger um, because the size we have works with the, the flows. And then also our agreement with uh, Brockton that we finally just finalized, um, our flows are in line with that agreement. So um, luckily we don't have to increase the size and contract wise, we're in good shape as far as what we're allowed to send. Thank you. I would agree. Sorry, I don't pay attention to the, the <laughs> chat rooms. I just uh, Thanks, Dave. It popped up. <laughs> Aren't you the secretary? Isn't he the secretary? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of my job. Good job. <laughs> All right, um, go down. Date for next meeting. Oh yeah, November. there was a question on that. Hey, Bruce. Hey. Bruce Martin. Yes, sir. Oh, okay, we're talking about the next meeting. Uh, is that something you gotta wait till you talk to the town hall? I did uh, no. have brief conversations regarding that today at the town hall. So I'm not sure if we can leave it open-ended still, uh, if you have to actually vote, but um, we would like to hold the next meeting in person utilizing the auditorium at Town Hall. Um, for this, uh, to be able to interview uh, potential um, candidates for the job openings we have. So and uh, do it in a socially distant manner. Uh, so I think that's definitely something that we can do. Uh, we may want to not have that meeting on a Tuesday night due to the fact that the town hall is open late on Tuesday night. So to uh, limit the amount of exposure to the town hall employees of people coming into the town hall for our meeting, we may want to hold the meeting that week on the Monday before. So I think the Wednesday after is a holiday. Um, so I, I'm not sure if, you, if we need to actually vote when the next meeting is or can we just call the next meeting when we have better information. But uh, I, I think we can do in-person meetings and interviews with candidates utilizing the auditorium. And uh, we just let one in at a time. We set, we'll have the auditorium set up in a fashion so everybody spread out far enough. Um, we can use wear masks at the same time. I talked to town hall maintenance who set up the town hall. He said it's certainly doable. On that note, I believe we're having a department heads meeting in the auditorium tomorrow, which would probably have more people at it than our commissioners meeting will have. So it's definitely something that can be done. All right, I mean, yeah, I don't think it's anything we gotta set. I mean. As long as we give proper notice, I'd say, you know, for everyone's schedule purposes, the, the 9th or worst case, if we got to go to the 12th, that Thursday, you know, I think Correct. we'll, we'll kind of target that. If I would prefer the 12th because I already have another meeting on the 9th, that Monday night. So, okay. And I want to be the. Yeah, I think it's important. Yeah, okay. We're all there. Either one works for me. It doesn't. Yeah, likewise for me. Yeah, same here. No, oh, wait a minute. It's Monday Night Football on the ninth. <laughs> well, Maybe. It's only the, the Jets, though. Is, it's only the Jets. They're, they're open uh, late on Thursdays, I believe, also. I don't know if that's an issue or not. I have to talk to other people at the town hall about that. Frankly, I don't see why it's an issue. The workers are in their offices will be in the auditorium, any potential, and the, inter the people will be in interviewed will only let in one at a time. They can wait in their cars until it's time. They'll wear a mask. They'll have the temperature taken downstairs where they have that set up. So I, I, I don't know if the fact that the town hall is open late on those nights is a factor. I'll find that out probably tomorrow. Is it open late on Tuesdays, Bruce, or is it just they have meetings in there or? There's only one night a week that they're open late, isn't it? Tuesday nights. 
Tuesday. Oh, it's Tuesday. Okay. Hey, Bruce, it's not for nothing. I mean, we could still do it probably Tuesday night. The only reason I say that is you think about when they do their voting. I mean, they got all kinds of people coming and going as well as the work is there. Right. I, it was just something that I was talking to with the, with the town hall maintenance day, and he wasn't sure if that would be an issue or not, and it was something I was going to discuss tomorrow at the department meeting. Okay. All right, let's get, let's get some additional info and we'll, we'll yeah. target a date that week. But do it the 10th, great. If not, hey, the 12th. I would, I would agree that we need to, you know, we're hiring employees. We need to see them face to face and, you know, a Zoom isn't going to cut it. That's great. Right. All right, so we'll TBD that. All right. Um, old business, Mastar project looks like they're kind of packing up for the winter. We got binder down, which is nice. Yeah, the roads look back good. in this. We'll come back in the spring. They did a nice job. They did a really nice job with the tent markings. Uh, yeah. I was appreciative of yeah, that. The whole lines. Yeah. Um, but they they really, you know, it's it's all temporary. It's going to get paved over, but they put it down like it's permanent. So that was appreciative. Um, you know, and it will hold up during the winter too, which will be good. Um, yeah. and together, yeah. I don't know if there's any other, like I said, they'll be back in the spring, we'll top it. And I think overall, it was a good project. It's nice to have the lights operating. Yeah, they did a good job, yeah. Yeah, the new traffic lights, yeah. <laughs> uh, complete streets, Spruce. We do we have any design yet? Uh, we don't have any finished design. Um, and also, uh, the other thing really to report on that is there was a deadline, uh, December 30th, as far as uh, 31st, as far as uh, completion. So I did a formal request to um, move that move that ahead to December 30th, 1st of next year, uh, which talking to the uh, coordinator, the grant coordinator, didn't, didn't seem to be, that would be an issue. A lot of towns are in the same boat. So, um, you know, we're just moving forward. Nothing really further to report at this time. Okay. Yeah. And obviously at this point, we're looking at a spring project. So right. we'll get it out and get it bid. Um, Force main. So we had the, we had the meeting last week. Uh, I think it was good information from uh, Ziad. I think just a follow up to get get that actual estimate, and then um, I guess I'll, I'll give Lisa a couple days to get into the seat and ask about a fall town meeting. Um, you know, with Ziad's estimate and. Go to a town meeting to get uh, funding and how we're going to pay for it and what's well, going to be loans, but um, get that process started because, as we said, we're wasting. Yep, you know we're already nine, ten months away from construction. We can't, we can't wait any longer. It's just, I don't know. Sorry, were you done? Yep, <laughs> yep. What do you got? Related question, related note. Uh, well, just noticing in the Women Express, it seemed they were forming a search committee or hiring a search firm for the uh, town administrator. So I didn't know if that means there's a temporary or a uh, interim position. Um, mm -hmm. But actually, more important, my concern is um, I, I think we were looking for the uh, uh, what do you call it, appointing of. Uh, one of our positions, we have to move that along too. I think uh, we probably want to get that yeah. on their agenda. I don't know how it works. <laughs> Do we have to put it in a formal request? Um, well, I think there's only one person that uh, applied for it. Okay, that <laughs> that too was there an application period? Yeah, I think there's only one person that showed interest so far. Okay, 
Well, good. At least Wayne, I, Wayne, I believe it is too. Ken Layler had to send me an email about a friend of his that was interested in the position, as well as um, Bruce had mentioned another gentleman that's interested in the position as well. So oh, okay. I, I wasn't aware of that. I know there's one. There was one that yeah. last I heard. The selectmen have to go through their process uh, and let us know. I guess. Uh, maybe no, there's supposed to be a joint meeting. It's a joint meeting between us and the selectmen, and it's a oh, joint it vote. Yeah, it's a it's a combined vote between the two boards, so it would be up to nine member up to nine members, nine votes. When's that uh, supposed to happen? Any idea? Uh, that's what, that's what I'm saying. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a lot of changes there, so uh, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, we may have to. Right. right. Yeah, because from, from what I saw, Lisa Green is the acting interim right. town administrator. That I think that I saw that on. Yeah, I use myself. Selectman Zoom. Yeah, effective tomorrow. So, and as far as we're concerned, questions, you know, we'll go to Lisa and until they, um, you know, hire a permanent. So. <clears throat> all right, that's, that's all. That's, that's on my list. I'll, uh, reach out and, and talk about both those, the fall town meeting and the filling of the, the open position on the board. Um, I had a couple items. Um, Bruce, the trash and the, the audit that we had there in August and the overbilling, um, not overbilling, the uh, added cost for the recyclables yeah. um any discussion you know we talked last time about that you know if we're not behaving certainly impose penalties but if they're going to keep imposing penalties they're going to need to have the backup that we're still not abiding by the contract so any discussions with waste management on that or, or so we're going to have them do an audit at the end of this month and um and see how that goes. Like, you know, I told uh, uh, my contact, Heather Laurel, that uh, we had put out some information out there to the residents. Um, and hopefully they're behaving better. The recycle stream looks a little better. Uh, and so we're going to have them do an audit at the end of this month. And in my opinion, we need an audit pretty much at the end of every month if they're going to continue charging that fee um that extra fee so we'll have it again we'll have an audit done at the end of this month if everything's good then we'll go back to uh the regular billing and if it's still incorrect then i'll have to probably put some more messages out there to the public and um uh, hopefully they get it and we'll do another audit at the end of november because you know like we discussed in the other meeting we, we're not gonna we're not going to pay an extra fee based on an audit that was done two months ago or three months ago. You know, that could have just been a bad month. You know, so we'll, we'll have the audits done monthly if we need to. That's. Yeah. And I think it's important, you know, that everyone understands, you know, I've seen all the flyers and, all that and the proper recycling, what can and what can't. I've seen the, the social media and spurred a lot of questions, which is good, you know, because ultimately we want to do it the right way and not have to incur additional fees. So, okay. Well, we, we, we can't have additional fees without documentation. They just can't impose bills to us without mm -hmm. documentation. That's a must. So it has to be done every month if that's going to be the case. Agreed. Okay. And then the last thing um, we, we touched on a little bit, the meeting the other day, we'd got the proposal from environmental partners to do some preliminary uh, design and engineering for a new building. Um, I went back through my notes. I know we got 
50,000 at the last town meeting for a study. And I think either Bruce or Dennis, I'm not sure who told me, but how much did we have left in the other article from a couple of years ago when we did the soil investigation? I, I never wrote it down. I, I apologize. Does anyone remember? Um, if you don't know, yeah, me, I don't. Sure. I forgot. Um, I can look it up if you give me one minute. All right. But I guess what, I mean, what we have, we know we can cover their, their estimated costs, you know, even what we have, what was voted in just recently. Um, I don't know if any board members want to talk about it or if they had any, a little more time to review the proposal. Um, I, I want to keep this moving forward. I think we need to keep it moving forward. I know we're going to be asking for a, a lot of projects and a lot of money over the next whatever couple of years, but um, it, it, it's it's all warranted. It, it, it's long overdue. Um, and, you know, next step, if, you know, that we'd get him a contract based on his, on his estimate, but I just didn't know if anyone else had any you need I'm a motion. To, I'm sorry. Do you want a motion to move forward? Uh, unless any questions, like you said. I, I don't know if we need that officially. We'll need a motion when we go to, if when we actually get a contract. I mean, this is just a, I mean, he gave us a proposal. Um, you know, we have a line item. We have the budget. We have the funds. So the funds are approved at town meeting. Um, I'm just... I didn't, I didn't want to even let it go another meeting. You know, we got this last week. I, I, I think, I think my question is when can they start? <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> I, I think most of us are in uh, the same agreement. I don't want to speak for the other commissioners, but uh, yeah, I think we all agreed this was a priority project. And uh, well, yeah. Kevin, I have that figure if you'd like it. Yeah, what is it, it's, Amy? It's fifteen thousand six hundred ninety dollars and fifty cents. All right. So we got a little bit. Yeah, that was from an article from a May two thousand sixteen meeting. Wow! Wow! That was for the uh, for the foundation, correct? Uh, it was for the DPW site evaluation. Site evaluation, yeah. Yeah, we did the soil borings. Soil and borings, yeah. Some That's right, yes. Um, 16, two, th 2016. Wow. So we get about 65 so, grand. I mean, this proposal will take up a little less than half of that. So we still have a decent amount if we wanted to do some additional design or some other activities or something comes up. Um, but so it seems like it seems like we would want to, based on the proposal, ask ask Ziad to send us a contract based on that proposal that we so the board can sign that and get him moving on that. I will also say that we shared that proposal with the capital improvement committee, and uh, they put that. Uh, on their agenda for their meeting this Thursday night, just just to share with them, uh, it was a DBW article. I'm sure we, I'm, I'm not sure we need any kind of uh, permission for them to move forward with our article, but uh, there's certainly they have the capital approval committee. So they're gonna review that. I may sit in on that. It's a Zoom meeting. I may sit in on that in case they have any questions. Um, yeah, but I, I think uh, that's what we want to be doing next, correct? Uh, get some kind of contract so we can sign it, have it signed and move forward. I would agree. Bruce, can you forward me the, the info for the meeting Thursday? Here for when you get it? Will do. I just like, same thing. I just like to sit in. I'm not going to. Okay. All right, so I think we can uh, 
if, if everyone is in agreement, we'll, we'll talk to Ziad and uh, have him at least start a contract, you know, and uh, let's get it moving. Did he add those extras in, you mean? But that uh, proposal he sent, you know, the, the four tasks to basically get us, yes. you know, some, uh, some, some initial engineering and building layouts, you know, he'll, he'll basically we'll get it to the point where we'll be ready to have, get an estimate on the project that we can take to town meeting for approval for a new building. Okay. Get us to that point. So. We still have to look at a funding source too. Yes. And, and I would expect and, and probably I would assume Ziad would just like he's doing with the force main participate and, and help us what the best Avenue and, and all that. Well, that's, yeah. that's something that uh, I don't know if we should uh, think about having a joint meeting with the board of selectmen um, in the very near future to discuss just that. Cause that's the most important thing is how do we move fo forward with a funding? So, uh, you know, we all need to be on the same page, so. Yeah. Cool. I can add that to my list. Keep you off the streets for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, that's all I had on my list. I don't know if anyone else on the board had anything. I have nothing. Oh. Um, Dennis, Bruce, you guys got anything? I, I do have one informational thing. Um, I recently sent a letter to uh, um, Mr. and Mrs. Larson at 25 Rock Street. Uh, their previous bill, water and sewer bill, has been unestimated uh, on the last eight years. Uh, resulting in them getting a bill, uh, come, a bill will be coming to them for 7,100 and change. Ooh. Mm. Wow. Something I could throw out to you, Dennis. Is this mm -hmm. way after or maybe two, three, four estimates that is a way we can, Similarly, your water meter thing, that you, if they don't let you in after two or three times, you can shut them down or charge them in some sort of fine or whatever to get these people to wake up so we can do something? Well, I, I understand where you're trying to go with it, and, 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 and I, I agree. I mean, it'd be nice to be able to do that. Um, uh, the, you know, this particular person, uh, according to the records, we, left, we did leave a, a slip every time. You know, uh, every uh, out of the eight eight estimates, we left a, a slip on seven, and uh, you know we have written down that we left, and we probably left one at the eighth time. We just the guy didn't write it down, whoever was reading the meter, that we uh, we left the, that we would like to either you know uh, read the meter ourselves, make an appointment, or um, or they could read it and send, and tell us, and they never responded to it. All right. You know. They, okay. Um, I would you know. If it wasn't for the fact of the new meters, you know, I mean, the, ultimately, the, the the solution to this is the the new meter. You know, right. um, but with, you know, I, the other thing is that I've, I'm, I've asked the the uh, you know CDS bill, billing about the how what our algorithm they use to determine an estimate, because I would uh, you know it, it seems I would re much rather overestimate and give them money back than and than and be in this position. Where somebody's looking at a seven thousand dollar water bill, yeah, you know, uh, because it was under red. I mean, I mean, because they don't. Let's face it: if you're handing them money back, you, they got a smile on their face. Okay, yeah. but not 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 so much the other way. So no. I think you know, in the future, it's the the estimates we need to. First of all, they can't. You know, the the current current way they do it is that it, it is done in some. You know, looking into this, is that. Estimates sometimes are based on previous estimates. In other words, you're making you're making a guess on how much they owe based on a previous guess. Right. Uh, so they should 
you know, they should have been, you know, and, uh, uh, trying to make an estimate off of another estimate is just, in my mind, foolishness. Just, you know, you should, they, they, it should be, you know, based on an actual uh, uh, reading from some time, you know. And then, you know, and not in this particular case, but in other cases, you know, you have parts where, you know, people change, people die, or they add more people, you know, and, and, the, and the estimate isn't any good. Um, well, so at, some, at, some is, point, yeah. at some point, we need to go back out there and, and like Ken said, it needs mm -hmm. to be sooner time than later that we need to actually go to the house and request to read the meter. So this yeah. doesn't happen. Whether we have to send a guy out at six o'clock at night to do it and pay the time and a half to do it, that we need to be doing that. Yeah, we need some way to wake the people up so that they uh, let us in or let us read it or to get them to read it and call it in. Well, I would, I would say that this bill here is gonna be a pretty good wake up. Well, yeah. Dennis, Dennis um, when, you, when you said that the system or whatever does the estimate, what, what, do, you, what do you mean by that? We, we don't control that? We don't look at, and again, if, nope. if it's been estimated that many times, you only have an estimated number to look at. But right. <laughs> that, that's not in our control. We don't, we don't say, okay, let's well, we, go. Whatever, however it was established in the past, and I can't tell you how it was, you know, how it was, but it, the, it, you know, I believe that when the girls, you know, ask for an estimate, the billing system, CDS billing, it figures it out. It, do, it does it. It's not like they, they, okay. they, they, they add it up on, you know, on the scrap piece of paper and they come up with the estimate themselves. The only time is that that is when somebody, um, if we know we've got an estimate and somebody's refused to let us on in, you know, we've actually chased them down in cases where we chase them down. We might just add another five hundred dollars to their bill just to get them to respond. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they pay the five hundred. We're gonna resurrect the zap fee. Adam. Yeah, I know that worked great. Well, we do. <laughs> Sometimes it did. Can I, can I chime in here for a minute with the billing aspect of it? Sure. Um, so. So if um, if an account needs to be estimated, there's a code in CDS that we put in, and the computer automatically generates that number for us. We don't do anything with it. And like Dennis said, it takes the last four uh, readings that are in the computer. So if the last four readings have been estimated, it's estimating again off the last four estimates. Right. But at some point, we know that they've, they've been estimated. So after the Correct. second estimate or the third estimate, we need to get a real reading. Whether we have to go out there at night to do it and bang on the door or, but we just can't just keep estimating and estimating and estimating. I, I, I agree with what you say, Wayne, but you know, if you, you know, you, we've write, written some of these accounts, we've written letters to, and uh, you know we've you know personally visited it, you know asked the estimate and you know it's not a good time or whatever. Or I got to move boxes. I'll call you back. You know and um, and some people just it just you know we've been a lot of these accounts we have been back to, but yeah. they just not you know and other than other than shutting their water off, you know the only other thing you can do is to to you know is stop using the the computer estimate and start using an estimate that you do yourself. You know, and I, or, it, or I in, think impose a penalty. Exactly. Yeah, and I, that, that, I, that's where I was going. That that's exactly where I was going. Oh, you know, right. so four I, estimated bills, $3,000. Right. So, I, I don't know. You know I, right. Well, but the thing is that I think that we should change. We can, and we can come talk to Danny at, at CES billing and say, we want to change the way the estimates are done. We, you know, I would say that the estimate is, so if you have three actual readings that you're going to look back and, and do an estimate on, I think you'd use those three actual readings and add 25% to the bill for the first estimate. And we can change that, you know, that, that automatic, that algorithm that it uses to say that, okay? And then the second year, the second reading, if it's another estimate, you add 50% to the bill. And you keep going up 25% until they either talk to us or let us in. Yeah, I, I think the new meters, 
I, I would assume, and, and maybe Amy, I don't know if you know, or Dennis, you know, we can run a report and, and, can. It, and, and it can tell us how it can tell us exactly what meters were estimated. And that's a, a report that can oh, be run every it, time we read meters. Right. Not only and, 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 and so you're, you're, you already know, I mean, like I said, now we're, you know, we got the Dead Sea Scrolls, you know, keeping track of meter readings and it's just, you know, the new right. system None will, will allow us to know. And, and if you stop it at two or three, well, you're still getting two good readings and two estimated readings. You know, if, they, if the, the system's going back four readings, that's two years right. currently. So mm -hmm. it, it yeah. just, yeah, none this, this is a, this is one that you got eight, you know, if yeah. you get it after two, well, you get two estimates and two reals. So you're still getting somewhat real numbers. None of the new meters are estimated. No. Right. Why would they be? Right. It's always, they, it's always an old. But I mean, it, 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 the board needs to come up with a decision of, of, of how many estimates we allow, and then we start with a, some type of penalty to get their attention so that we can well, actually read the meter or put a new meter in. Yeah, I'm with you, Wayne, and I'm, I'm willing to say it's one, one estimate, but then also I think we have to send out something like a, a certified letter. Exactly. Then we can yep. trace going forward because we have to change that policy for sure that the notification current and we have proof of it because I, I think going forward we, we can't risk any more of these kinds of mistakes. So I fully agree. We've got to change the policy and, and I'm with, you want to go one, two or three strikes. Um, two years. <laughs> Even with COVID, yes, we have to come up with an arrangement. Well, if you do two money. estimates, that's a year. Yeah, yeah I know. I agree. I know. That's what I'm saying. Maybe it's one. <laughs> it just, it can't happen anymore. We, and we have to overcome, you know, I'm saying the COVID issue too. We, we have to get, we have, not tonight, but let's put that on the agenda to find a way to work around that. Yeah, we and, to, we, and we need to get these meters, get the meters put in, the new meters. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If, if we got to buy suits for the guys or something, then let's talk about it. But uh, anyway, that's another topic. But yes, yeah, so I'm agreeing. You know, I, I, I would say at, the, at a third estimate, you know, so you give them two. If you come to a third estimate, whether it's a, a, a penalty, a fee. Right. I, I'll use the old zap charge. I think the zap is a bad that's, that's not good for us. It's not a good look. It's no, I know. I hear what you're saying, but that's that's Old. the point. We can't no. resort. To but it, I think it, it goes to your fee structure. That that can be an added fee. Put it on the list. Third yeah. estimate, oh, you yeah. get a fee, and then and, and you know. That's why. You, right. So if you, and that's why I'm saying though, if you right off the bat, the very first one you give, or the very first estimate, it should you know that a person gives gets it gets it should be based on actual readings one three previous actual readings plus 25 percent and then yeah. the second one you know that way like i said we're getting we're now we're back into we're giving them the money when we finally do get in you keep squeezing them like that until we get, finally do get in and then we'll be handing the money back as opposed right. to you know you owe us, you owe us seven grand Nope. Well, I guess this whole thing goes this whole thing goes away with new meters, right? That, that's what I'm saying. And, and that's, so maybe maybe Dennis, maybe that solution of just changing the billing. I don't know what they can or can't do. Might just be the short term. You know what I mean? That right. it, you know, yes. I, I, this doesn't happen. I don't think that often. Um, you know that we get four years of estimated. Reading. Yeah, but well, see, we don't know four that. years. You know what I mean? Yes, I know we have estimated readings, but I think. You, you know, right. you guys have an idea of what some of the problem ones are, and if it's showing up a few times, we, we try to resolve it, you know. We do. Um, we but do. in all actuality, how many do we have that have been estimated four or five times? Yeah, probably quite a few. So we, we don't know what the, we don't know what the exact amount is that those people owe. Uh, we have to have it. I know, I know, I know. This previous billing, there were two hundred uh, around two hundred accounts estimated. 
That's that's insane. That's too much. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> now knowing what we know and been through, we we can't. But I can't tell you. So out of those 200 people, out of those 200 people, we don't know how many owe thousands of dollars. Right. Could be all of them. No. Nope. That's a horror show to me. That's Think about the estimates, Dennis, that you're having trouble getting in just for estimates or an actual reading. How are you going to get in the house for the to change the meter? Well, if it wasn't for COVID, I just shut their wall. I would do the procedure of that, you know, let us let us in and, and, and right. know, through the three time notice, right. the three time notice, and, and then I would when I, then I would shut their water off. Okay, and, and you know, but we you know we never got that far along. But the first, we never got the entire town. You know, uh, uh, one time with the meters, let alone let alone three. Right. You know, um, it, it, before it's COVID start, stop things. You know, so now it's basically you know if people request and we can you know we can separate, we do them. You know, but if you know you can't you know plus the rules have changed, you can't shut people's water off during the, the COVID thing. You know, they've changed the rules as far as that goes. You know, just like you can't kick somebody out if they don't pay their rent. Right. You know, right. Uh, you know, so, you know, the, the, you know, the only way I, it's like I said, it, it, I, I can think of is that, you know, the estimates should be based on actual usage, not previous estimates for one thing. And then, and then, uh, and change and change the way the estimates done so that it, it always is more, you know, not less. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like it's once you, once you, once you do an estimate. So if you have one out of the three previous readings that's low and you do an estimate, based on those three previous readings, that can be low. And if you don't try and add something to that to cover your, you know, to cover yourself, then then the next estimate could be lower than the actual usage. And then it's a year after, you know, then it's just keeps going. Yeah. Change the amount you bill it. Yeah, I mean, just by the fact that we wind up like every month with people abating or requesting changes to, you know, we got like $60, sometimes $20. So anything over, you know, that amount, or let's call it a hundred in a billing period, it's going to cause a problem. So we, yes, we kind of, I'm agreeing with your plan. We got to raise and notify, and then hopefully we get through this COVID thing and maybe shutting off the notice. Yeah, because th this system is broken. Yeah, we can't, we can't yeah. go through. We, we can't go through 200 <laughs> issues of that type of, uh, I'm not blaming you, Dennis, I'm stuck with. Uh, no, it's just uh, the, the factor of the system and being yeah. so antiquated. Dennis, yeah. question on that, you say there's 200 accounts. Um, oh, wow. Is there any yeah. ability to get a list of what accounts? And even if you just had that list and compared it to the list from the previous and you just go down and Hey, this this house has been this was on the list again, and maybe, you know, find those ones that might have multiple estimates, or or do they just? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we can maybe find. Amy knows, we can but, find. Uh, our, yeah, yeah, we can find where which which houses have more than let's say you know three or four or, or nine. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good that's idea, uh, Kevin. Because let's say it's even people we're familiar with our constituents. I'm willing to call. I'm willing to call people I know. Uh, it's tough, you know. People you don't know. That's a different story. Some people may not even know. That's what I'm saying. I, I, they get their bill, they pay it. I mean, we've heard that plenty of times. So I didn't know. Nobody told me. But they didn't get the little card. They didn't say it got thrown away. I, whatever. I did, yeah, I did look in, and I did look into that. Uh, if it's an estimated bill, it does say so in the bill. This is an estimated it, bill. Nobody looks at. We know nobody looks at the bill. Or I shouldn't say that. Many people <laughs> read the bills. Uh, yeah. So I can I can tell you that most of the estimates that were done in this billing cycle, they've had multiple estimates. It's not just one. I have a pile on my desk of all the estimates, and there's a lot of them. That's that's where the problem lies, right there. I guarantee you that some of those people owe thousands of dollars, and they don't know it. Yeah. That's a problem. I, I motion that we adjourn tonight. Too late to change now for me. It's getting frustrating. De Dennis, Dennis, uh, how how do we start chipping away at this? And, and I guess Matt, how do we help Amy get through the stack? Um, it, it, is it 
you know, Lonnie helping her out? Is it getting someone in there a couple extra hours a week to help her out? Someone that might know the system? I mean, if you take a dozen, if you take a dozen of those, you know, you know whatever, 15 to 20 and, and just get letters out, maybe you get 10 that you get an actual estimate. So now we get 10 less. Oh. Uh, it, yeah. It's just well, it's, it, many it's of them time have, and effort. Right. Many of them have had letters and just, you know, with no response. A list of those that are estimated right now, Dennis. I know you can't fill them this time around, but for next time, then you got the list and you can uh, just start hitting them for the with the surcharge more or less off. That letter. We, we would have to put all that into action, right? vote it and, you know, make sure it's documented before we started it. Uh, I'm not against it. Um, and it, it, it just that, that I, I it, really, it, I, you know, one thing that I really think would make it would have made a difference is, you know, kind of late to change it now. But if it, but if the if the algorithm that made the estimates, you know, made sure that they were they were overestimated. Okay, not underestimated. Always lean to overestimated. Yes, we would eventually. Yes. You know, eventually they would have been squeezed to the point where you know that the, their water bill, where they would have called on it to 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 complain about it. At which point we we could say, well, let us change the meter, and we'll get a real reading, and then you and 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 give you the ability that you don't have to call it into us anymore. We can read it by radio. Yeah, or if when they go to sell the home, they actually get a credit that would be appreciated as opposed to an added charge. So I, I agree exactly. with that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. You know, right. We can also send a crew to the house to talk to the homeowner. That would, you know, if they answer the door. I mean, chances are if they want, you know, because they know why we're there. They, you know, if they don't answer, uh, you know, if they want to answer the door when we're knocking on it to read the meter, they're not going to not, uh, you know, I'll answer it for us to, to, you know, discuss their meter. Um. Here's something I run by you, Dennis, and I know what the answer is going to be. It'll be a no, but could it be possible with all those ones you get your estimates on that some evening or some savvy that you get a police officer to go with them? Just this, this way, maybe you'll make the people feel safer. Maybe it will give you a little push to be able to get in the door to read things. I, you know, it, it, I'm sure that that, you know, that would carry some weight, but I would I would think that we would at least send a you know a registered letter before we showed up with a police officer. Well, not so much to, to threaten them or anything, but just as a like you said, extra added weight. But okay, you have the letter for right. Makes sense. Right. I'm yeah. I think you know it might add some weight to it, but uh, but like I said, I think we would at least you know do another registered letter. And then like I said, a lot of these accounts have already had multiple letters. Oh. Yeah. And it's noted on the cards, correct? Or on the information? It's in the notes. It's in the notes somewhere. And whenever there's a letter been sent, you know, or, or an appointment that's been canceled for a meeting. That's the other thing. A lot of them, they make an appointment to, 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 they've made an appointment in the past to have the meter changed, and then they've, they've, they've um, called and canceled it and, and, and said they'll, you know, call back to reschedule and, and never do. Yeah. Uh, we have I'm, to I'm document gonna, those. We I'm going to make a motion right now that everyone that has more than two estimates receives a registered letter from the DPW Board of, Water, uh, Board of Commissioners that advises them that they need to get in contact with the DPW as their water bill may be hundreds plus more than they realize from all these estimates. But a registered letter has to go out to all of those people that have more than two estimates. Yeah, to make them aware they got estimates too, yeah. Yeah, I second it. it... All right, if we, if we, yeah, we gotta get extra help or some uh, whatever it takes. Yeah, I, 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 I would agree with everything you guys are saying. I think it comes down to, you know, how can we help you know, the office, get it done. And I'm not looking for answers now. I think, think about it, you know, Dennis, Bruce, and, and when, 
you know, maybe it's uh we, we pick a couple Saturdays and, and, and we knock on a few doors. Maybe we get a reading from half of them, some of them, you know what I mean? The people around more, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of, you would have thought with COVID that maybe the numbers would have went down. Is this more or less or about the same, Amy? Is this kind of normal? Um, I would say it's around the same. Um, I don't think it's any more than it usually is. Um, it's just, I know the guys, when they leave the slips at the doors, that, that's a great system and all, but I, I think a lot of times those slips blow away. People don't get them, and they just don't think to call us with their reading. Being nice to them, Amy, I'm sure they take them and throw them away. <laughs> that, they, they could do that, too. <laughs> you, know. you know, you get a young uh, child that opens the door and doesn't know what it is. It goes in the yeah, room you, or whatever. Uh, <laughs> people, they may not even see them, you know? Yeah. Well, the other I, I, thing that's happened that I noticed le recently was three people called with readings two to three days after they had been estimated. <laughs> now it's too late. It's already in no. the billing system. No, but at least you got, I mean, I'd say you got something, you know? Right. Well, you got it to compare to the next, next reading. At least you have a reading. When, when, we, when we send, and I'd, I'd like to add, to the motion a little bit um can we ask i know we say contact us um i only remember it my family used to own a house in new hampshire and every whatever quarterly it's i mean whatever they get a postcard in the mail and the postcard was basically a picture of the meter that you could then walk down to your meter with that little postcard and fill in all the appropriate little numbers just like it looks like on your meter now i know different meters look different but add that to the letter or put that on the letter, right? You know, yeah, ideally we want to get it swapped out too, but at a minimum we need to get the reading and, and maybe help him, maybe helping him understand the information we need, add that to the letter as well. You know, a, a fill in the boxes, write the numbers in, you know, start right to left or left to right or well, the, those slips that they leave, they have the little boxes on there. So it's, okay. it's the appropriate number of boxes for the reading. So okay. that's similar to what you're talking about, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So let's include that with this letter. So, right. it's, you know, it's a letter, a letter notifying that they could owe the town thousands of dollars, which is one. And two, you know, because people might still be concerned. I'm not going to let them in my house or, you know, and I, I understand all that. Well, let's help them get us the info we need and include that visual aid, I'll call it. Oh. Actually, Kevin, I'd like to upgrade that to, you know, in today's technology world, how about we take a photo? I mean, the owners take a photo, send it even, into the yep. town hall email, because uh, even yep. the card with the boxes could get messed up. And they don't want them to send it to town hall. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's, um, most people, you know, have a smartphone and could uh, just okay. Dave, I'm going to go one more further. What's that? Did we set up, did we set up an email account? Ooh. Water meter readings at WhitmanMA.gov, whatever. I, I don't know. I'm just. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we're going to use technology, let's use it. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we have to severely change the, the, the past uh, historical actions, let's call it. Um, we're still going house to house with tablets. <laughs> it might as well be granted. We're leave, the fact that we're leaving something on the doorknob. Actually, I think I took one off my door, door, my door a couple months ago. Uh oh. Maybe I'm one of them. Go flood on the kids. Uh, yeah, I think I am too. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis, could you could you look into that with Josh? Just I'm taking a picture you know? tonight. Yeah. And, and, um, and again, we can that. put all that in this letter. Right. I can come. I'm a, can come up with some kind of letter. Let you guys take a look at it, and um, and then we can start mailing them to the, um, the the multiple accounts. Yeah, and let's include a, a a visual aid, how to read your meter, take a picture of it, and and then set up an email. I would. I mean, let's I would, at least I would, it, uh, it's going would, into one account. I mean, we all, you know, we could yeah send it to this person, send it to that person, but if you just set up a generic email account. 
And, and I, uh, I would, I would, uh, you know, start with the, the, you know, fact that we're running across places that have been unestimated, and that uh, just because you underestimate it doesn't doesn't uh, mean you don't have owe the money. Right. Well, and, and also in the letter, Dennis, uh, probably at the bottom, we can come and change your meter. <laughs> yeah. So we don't have to go through this anymore. Yeah, that's good. By email, they gotta put their uh, name and address on there. If it's not already in there, send them the reading. Will do no good. All right, so we 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 do have a motion and a second on the floor. So if um, we want to take a a vote, the motion to send a letter, certified letter to the accounts, asking for readings and all that. Wayne. Hey. Dave. Yes. Ken. Can I amend that and just ask how many estimates do they have, it, have to have before you send in the letter? More than two. Or I was two. saying one. More than two. <laughs> Currently, <laughs> if someone has two or more. Okay, so amend it to more than two. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll okay. start with that. And I guess any any progress. I'm, I'm a yes as well, by the way. So, All right. um, and I guess uh, entertain. You know, I don't know what our budget can or can't afford, Dennis, or your budget. If we need to, we'll, we'll probably make it up with one, one address. Well, yeah, yeah. that's yeah, that's. It. <laughs> if you look at it that way, but unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess that's, you know, we can always move money, Dennis, if we had to, you know what I mean? So right. if there's, you know, some additional My goal. hours, additional hours or additional person personnel, you know, that's a good point. We, we get one or two of these paid out. We can, we can move monies, you know, if a budget line item starts, you know, getting, if we don't have enough. In a salary my goal, item. my goal with this is that, I mean, who on this board would like to get a seven thousand dollar water bill? Nobody. 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 Oh, I, I can't. I can't. That's insane. It's yeah. hard to face right. people with, with that. So, th this can't continue anymore. We need to get to the bottom of this quickly. This can't linger on like a like a toothache. We need to get to the bottom of it and get it fixed because this can't continue to happen. If if we could certainly look at getting the letters out by the next meeting, and, and I guess Dennis, you can fill us in if that's Google or Amy as well, or what's the best way to do that? Yeah, we're making. Paul will be coming in this time around to help out with the billing for the water. <laughs> I don't keep her out of trouble, too. Yeah. <laughs> They're not allowing Paula to come in right now to help out because of COVID. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. That's through, is, that's is it through the, um, the Council on Aging that does the volunteers. They, they're not allowing them to come in because of the COVID right now. That makes sense. Okay, thanks, Amy. But can she do it remotely? Maybe. You know what but I mean? If it's just we're taking lists and typing up letters and, yeah. you know, if you got the list, it's really just putting up them. Um, that's know, true. I, we can look into that for sure. I can call and ask if that's something that she could do. Right, and we can work on that because what works for the for the council on aging may be different than what work what can work for us. Having one person come into our building that has a low risk personnel, as opposed to people coming in to you know the council on aging where there's a higher risk uh, of issues related to COVID. It, you know, it's, it's quite a bit different. Yeah, it's worth so, asking. I, yeah, it, it, I'd even say if, if, you know, I wouldn't want to put Paula in that position if she's concerned. I know there's only a few in the office, but there's still a few people that come and go. You know, it might be something that could 
be done remotely. So if if we are moving on, I just have a few things and I will be brief. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Yes. We got sidetracked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that tomorrow we're taking delivery of the Peterbilt cabin chassis. That's only going to be here for a short period, not even the whole day, and then it's going right over to Kerry Trucking to have the owl body uh, put on it and the plow and everything outfitted. So that would be nice to have that new truck in and beautiful truck. Um, moving on from that, uh, the town survived our big windstorm last week. Uh, the guys did a great job. We had several streets uh, blocked by down trees. Um, they did a great job uh, clearing the streets neatly, safely. Nobody was hurt. No, uh, you know, nothing got damaged. So um, that was a good night. I, I know Dennis's guys were running around all night long uh, with generators. They did a great job keeping the sewer stations up and running. Um, the one issue that came up again, and it comes up every time we lose power, is 18 and 14 is prone to power outages, specifically more than 18 and 27. And every time that happens, even though it's a state-controlled intersection, Whitman DPW is asked to put out traffic control devices, meaning barrels with stop signs on them at all four corners of that intersection. With no lights there whatsoever, illuminating the intersection, it's really crazy and it's, it's very dangerous. We ended up putting a light tower up in the corner of Wendy's parking lot and shining it out into that intersection and left it on all night long just to hopefully let people see what's going on there. And we still had the stop barrels out there, but I reached out to the state. They couldn't provide us with any additional equipment. And uh, so I had a conversation with Chris Serra, uh, who's the lead uh, engineer for the DOT project up there, and he was going to ask about the possibility if those control panels could be rigged up to a uh, generator, even if it was our generator. So if we were out, we we're going to be without power for many hours. We'd go in there, you know, possibly flip a switch and switch over to generated power and just run those traffic control lights. Super dangerous. He didn't know if it was a possibility, but he was going to get back to me on it. And that was just late last week, so I haven't heard anything back. But uh, my other question there. Yeah, it's not a town. This, it's not a town run intersection. It's a state highway run intersection. But you know, response I got from the emergency dispatcher in the middle of that storm was, "quote We can't be catering to towns that do not have power at their intersection." So we, we are on our own. Bruce, who owns the lights? Do we own them or does the state own them as far as, or who maintains them? Us or the state? 100% state controlled intersection me and they, if any lights get knocked down, they do the maintenance on the lights. If anything happens to the lights, we call state DOT. Uh, okay. So, you know. I got to ask. The only I want to ask you, I don't know if we initiated or them. Uh, I believe there's a battery backup option to from an intersection I did. It's not as good. I mean, they definitely, you know, shorter lifespan than a generator if we, if we could get that. But um, can you ask him about that as well? Like if that's, uh, I'm 99% sure it is an option that maybe can actually fit in the cabinet that they put out there. And, uh, you know, let's say it runs 24 hours anyway. Just as a short term, because the generator, you know, I'd love to, it, but we, we can't even get them for our sewer <laughs> plants, pump stations. So <laughs> I don't know. Right. I, and I agree. It's yeah, all I important. So. I agree. It's critical. I, you know, it's, it's not safe. Um, and I've been through there. But it's been dark. So I there agree. Were, there were vehicles specifically moving north and south on Route 18 that weren't we are even tapping their brakes as they went through going 40 to 50 miles an hour. And where the where other vehicles on going east and west on 14, we're assuming that they were stopping also. So it was, it was the wild west. So yeah, I will inquire about battery backup. And even at the battery, maybe it could just go to flash on a battery. 
Right. You know, so yeah, you know, yeah, just you use a little even, you know, maybe use less power or you have the power of less devices, but at least you have the visual. Yeah, you know, either you all red, red or right, red. red one way and yellow the other, yeah. at least you have Some, a visual. Something. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's insane. I <laughs> It was really bad up there. I, w I was up there. <laughs> it was kind of scary. Yeah, it was. And the next day in the daylight, it was still scary trying to get in through the intersections. Yep, power didn't go on until around, I believe, 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock, yeah. 1 p.m. Yep. Okay, that, that was all I had. Oh, okay. All right. Anybody else? All right. Over a lot of ground. Motion? We, we did. Someone wants, <laughs> someone wants to make a motion. <laughs> motion to adjourn. You want to second that? I'll second it. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Good night, everyone. Thank Aye. you. All right. Good night. Thank Aye. you. We'll talk Aye. to you.